Welcome back, adventurers. Well, we are con continuing our journey to the first tree. Now, after meeting that mysterious stranger, now we even have an upgraded coin to lead our path, to guide our path. Well, let's see. All right. Yeah. Looks like we need to go into the light. Well, maybe this way. There goes Mr. Raven. Again, this is giving me a headache. So. And then on to the brake path. Is this the right path now? Is this the right way? I have no idea. Back into the light. This might be the path. Oh man, everything looks the same here. Yep, it's like it's the same background over and over again. And into the white. Well, maybe this way. Hello. This must be the clearing. The clearing of the first tree. There's a hedgehog. There's I the hedgehog, see a volunteer brothers. who would like to participate in this magic performance. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please give him a hand? Yay. Ghostly audience, the great Saroff. With the eyes beaming electricity down on everybody. Death beams. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a volunteer. Yay! What am I volunteering for? With my clairvoyance, I look right into your heart. He sent you. A child. Yep. Jeremiah, I was once just like you. Then I faced the cruel reality. You didn't have the same hat. The facts. I became a grown up <sighs> when he locked me out of those incredible worlds. But our world is not a place for magic. No matter how brilliant you yeah. are, success is impossible. But I'm no sorry one really to believes tell you that. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Only for him. You will soon realize that. He should never have sent you. He will soon come. He does send. He does tend to do the impossible a lot. More than he did for me. Yeah, let's see. This performance is pretty lame. I mean, all he did is... Uh, talk about the Maquis. You still have much to learn. The audience, <laughs> they love only me! When you put them under mind control, yeah. But we have yeah, wasted that enough is. time. And Let's now, up there. card tricks, ladies and gentlemen. I am banishing this boy into the wood of the first tree. That's what everyone wants to see. Even Jerry, Jerry looks happy about it. And that, honorable audience, is magic! Is magic! <laughs> Do they just use both takes? Jerry. Yep. Can you hear me? We haven't got much time. My magic isn't strong enough to ward off Zarov's curse for long. He banished you into the first tree. Yep. I tried to shield your mind from the clutches of his black magic as best I could. Do not falter, Jerry. Be on your guard. Zarov's spell nails have darkened the soul of the first tree. Others must be trapped in its magical wood as well. Go and find them. Do not succumb to fear, Jerry. Yeah, so I have you two friends that give up. Disappear. Must not give up. Not give up. Give up. Must give up. 
You must give up. Uh, where, where am I? So he's pulling one of these numbers off. Yeah. The lazy boy fell asleep right in front of a portal tree. Huh. But he wants to be a tree walker. What a sacrilege. Who would fall asleep in front of a tree? I mean, jeez. Ah. <laughs> tree walkers never sleep. Plato? I'm sorry, but my friend Jerry needs help again. I haven't got time for strangers. Strangers? But I am Jerry. He thinks that cardboard figure is me, and he doesn't remember me at all. Looks like a zombie, you too. Is it gonna eat Plato? Friend is back. What wretch is this? Daring to disturb the quiet of the woods. The toad croaked angrily. It really didn't like being woken up. Or having his face plastered with posters either. The forest. <laughs> Silly little Jerry was actually dumb enough to approach a dangerous, gigantic monster toad. Stanley parable time. Talk to it. Maybe it knows how to get out of it. An excellent idea. <laughs> so do I follow the narrator or go off script? Silly little Jerry is completely befuddled. Oh really? The eyes. The eyes are looking at me everywhere. Oh, speaking of off script, let's go see what's let us all. What have we here? To our like dumb to me. The Curse of Zara. Act 1. Silly curse little of Zara. I am not silly. <laughs> Hated by all woodlanders. No, that's a lie. An obnoxious moocher through and through. That's not true. Finally trampled to death by the angry rock toad. Who? Who would write this nasty stuff? A mean old man. <laughs> what a crybaby! Nothing is like it seems. You must give up. The spell nails have darkened the soul of the first tree. Just give it up. The lizards. <laughs> Zarov. Hooray for Zarov! Yay! I must stop Zaro. <laughs> Curses. That's what happens when you uh, tell the audience to always cheer your name. Of too course, large I didn't mean it that, that way. That much too heavy for puny little Jerry, of course. Oh, look at them. Huh, I'll show you. Must... That's like at least three ply oh, cardboard. Right. Milk does do a body good. All right. I wonder what the switch does. It switches on the light. So oh, right. it's a light switch. <laughs> Even the baby liked that one. All right. So what does the voice tube do? Hello? Hello there, Luminance Lighting Service. How may I help you? A good friend of mine would like to be back in the limelight. Yeah. Who's the lucky guy then? A large toad, here on stage. Very well. I can see illuminating this gentleman will be a truly daunting task. This looks <laughs> like a job for a limelight deluxe. Is that a fat joke? Yeah, let's see. Close to the toad now. Oh, they're stuck pretty tight. Take your hands off me, human. They're too firmly attached. I need to think of something else. It's a miracle that the toad can breathe at all with them on his face. These posters are really horrible. 
says the silly boy who thinks his space octopus picture from first grade is truly great art. It's a space octopus. Hey, I got a D minus for it. <laughs> who doesn't like a good space octopus? Silly little Jerry had never seen such pointy thorns. <laughs> yeah, they look so pointy over there. Uh, the thorn bushes are in the way. Silly little Jerry had never seen such pointy thorns. Their pointiness made the boy who was a coward in the first place tremble with fear. Uh, with all the Persona 5 that I've been playing lately. Way too pointy. This is so much a cognitive world type boy? thing. <laughs> hey! Come up here yourself and bite your way through the shrubbery. Huh, knew it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You show the hedgehog brother. Alright. Hmm. The toad's breathing rather heavily. <clears throat> no wonder, it's got these ugly <clears throat> posters sticking all over its body. I'll try to tear off the posters. Oh! I'm oh, that's going something. to squish you. It won't let me get any closer. You spell. I don't think you can jump high enough to squish him. You used us. You want to hitch a ride on my bike, but I need to deliver the mail. Jerry didn't care what the frog said because he was too lazy to walk. What? But it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> all right. This shit is huge. I'll say. So we got. Hmm. I bet fake. they fit exactly into the toad's nostrils. Well, that's something. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get close and do that. Hello. Hello, young man. Although, yes, uh, Although, why you'd want to shove something into your toad's not the first thought you have is that you can shove these things into the toad's nostrils. Uh -oh. This is Jerry we're talking about. Take your hands off me, human. I bought you. <clears throat> Yay, My and back is clearing. Hmm. I was willing to squish you, but the spell that fogged my mind is now broken. Oh. Oh. I will now return home. And he took the road with him. Of time. One friend saved. Isn't that good enough for you? <laughs> Gotta get the nail. But that's. Jerry ignored the inconspicuous, absolutely insignificant nail. The evil spell nail the old magician mentioned. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but your manipulations aren't working, old man. Let's see. Plato, are you alright? I'm sorry, but my friend Jerry needs help again. I haven't got time for strangers. Strangers? But I am Jerry. Jerry didn't care what the frog said because he was too lazy to walk. What Except are you I saying, never Jerry? used his bike as something from the, the one time he offered. But I need to deliver the mail. Jerry didn't care what the frog was saying. He would simply take the bicycle when his friend was asleep. He thinks that cardboard figure is me. <laughs> and he doesn't remember me at all. All right. Let's see if a familiar sound. 
Ruby, Ruby. Oh, Cherry? Yep. Cherry, where have you been? Where have I been? The three so of that's why he's one of the friends that and came then... with me. Oh, just as long as you're doing all right. I was about to say the same. Friendship removes the nail. Who's supposed to believe that? Well, it worked. Yeah, hey. I kinda love those bad speakers playing the music. Where did Plato go? Unfortunately, Plato, the clumsy amphibian, recently had an accident with his bicycle. Oh, really? He broke all his frog legs on an oak while being forced to deliver a useless letter for a certain... Jerry Hazelnut. How? Oh. Dare. Man, miserable bitch, bitch. Hey, look who's there. Spotting Tertador's porky. Maybe he can help me. <laughs> uh, the old leprechaun. Of course. Oh, yeah, there's the poster. Wishes, and now they're glittering gold. As if I hadn't known it. All you need to do is give me your life. Right here, on stage. Immediately, Jerry was absolutely determined to do just that. The end. I'm not gonna do that. But gold is the most terrible investment of all. Go ahead, boy. Draw your last breath. Everyone loves gold. That should make everyone happy. <laughs> all right. See, there's a clover leaf. Hey, it's clover. It's firmly nailed to the ground. Ah. Uh. There's no way I can rip it out. Don't you touch me, Shamrock! You're no good looty! <laughs> I thought that was under his hat. Oh my. And let's see what the script says. The curse of Zara, <clears throat> Act 2. Let's see. Let's say final act. Without hesitation, Jerry accepts the Leprechaun's goal, <laughs> and in return gives up his hopeless fight. He ceases to live. Not much of an investment. But I guess it works out for you, because then you can just take your gold back. Let's see, a rift in the landscape. God, that horrible... Somebody really needs to upgrade their sound system. Reality itself appeared to be breaking apart. There's something behind it, too. I can't widen it with my hands. I'm used to widen it. Well, I can tear stuff. Right, this should work. Wait, Jerry. Yes? Do you really want to know how deep that rabbit hole goes? Excuse me? <laughs> You're about to uncover a terrible secret. Bye bye, me. <laughs> Lever? Is that all? Jerry was so disappointed he wanted to die. <laughs> he seems to keep coming up with reasons for me to die. It's like he doesn't like me or something. Let's see. Round button. I wouldn't have expected this, even of a sheep hugger like yourself. Indeed. Nobody had thought that Jerry would be capable of so much wickedness. Trying to punch him with him? Well, that got the crowd against me. Two birds with one stone. If his murderous plan had worked, he would now own all the gold. How perfidious! And perfidious. A stylish, superior top hat would have been history. What a rotter! Good thing you had to see it. Yep, gotta protect the hat. Such a lovely hat, too. Uh. So, let's see. What's this new now? There goes the shamrock! Oops. No! Ouch! The lovely shamrock! He came off! Uh, I'm sorry. Uh. That I should be I on your head. <laughs> Ouch! 
Four door. Me gold. Me gold. Gotta gather up all the gold. Now the Luchi pop up. Ha! Jerry's lethal trap is sprung, and he steals the poor leprechaun's much more elegant top hat. Yeah, who wants gold? That top hat is a much better investment. Well, who cares? Frankly, he's stolen so much shells from this guy. I really think that he didn't. He's not actually under a curse. He's just acting. By all the snatty snap doors of all the peak bug banshees. If it isn't, young Jordan, the blubber, looks Yay. like a written of me delusion, boy. Thank you ever so kindly. Uh -huh, surely sure. Oh, yeah. Should I turn someone into a sheep to stop this madness? No, no, no! You must help me remove the nail. Oh, yeah. my and our done just what if you turn Zara off into a sheep? Wasn't that just in the song? Hail, and hail, and waps of mist. Thanks, Mr. O'Donnell. The curse I was under is broken. I'm going home. And our done is born for freedom. You remember now that's some rainbow. So this one, even though friendship won, I had to cut. Grab the nail for all. So I guess, well, friendship. Yeah, he would never runs my friend. <laughs> Kitsune. The land of volcanoes. Sharp swords and man-eating fox spirits. What a beautiful place to fail in, Jerry Ford. Just give up, Bowman. That's what I always think whenever hey. I go to someplace nice. I'm a fox, I swear. Kitsuna. Just look at the mask and everything. You are trapped in a human's body. No mask can hide that, Kitsuna. But humans and oh. foxes can never be friends. But if a human accepts a fox for who she is, it doesn't matter. Even if that were the case, why aren't you changing back? I I, I tried to change back. The wood statue it, it looks won't work. creepy with you teeth. You may wish to be a fox again, but your heart is lost. I shall protect your ears from the confusion wrought by humans. I shall heal you from being human, or devour you as a human. <laughs> well, I still have a bell. Let's see if that works. Hello? Hello, looking at the time, we should end this session now. So, let's read the script first. Right, a new script. The Curse of Zara, Act 3. Little Jerry won't give up. He kept yep. bothering the foxes incessantly. Until they grew tired of the immature smart Alec and devoured him, bones and all. Ouch! <laughs> that wouldn't hurt too bad since he just swallowed you whole. Just the acid, you know, slowly eating away at your body afterwards. So, on that note, adventurers, we'll continue our The Curse of Zaroth in the next session. Have a good night!